Dartmouth College grad Abby D'Agostino is known for her selfless nature. So it came as no surprise when she helped her competitor, Nikki Hamblin of New Zealand, to get up and finish the race after the now famous chain reaction fall. But what surprises even doctors is how she was able to then keep running over a mile to finish the race. I'm amazed. I mean, this is, this is you watch it in NFL all the time. You watch it in soccer. This is an injury. The athlete goes down and they don't get back up. You're not going to see 99% of even your elite athletes getting back there on the field immediately or out on the track right away. D'Agostino tore her ACL, which will likely require surgery in the next few weeks. A full recovery could take six to nine months. In a statement, she says that she knew her experience in Rio was going to be about more than her race performance. The moment with Hamblin solidified that thought. D'Agostino continued by saying, By far the best part of my experience of the Olympics has been the community it creates what it symbolizes. There's nothing like adrenaline, but it also takes, uh, you know, tremendous character and it, it really uh, is, is a testament to how committed she is to what she does. It is a long road to recovery now, but those who know her from Dartmouth believe she will be back to compete again at the same elite level. And she's still very young for a distance runner. A lot of distance runners don't hit their peak until they're closer to 30. You know, and Abby's only, you know, I think 24 right now. But I think for a year from now, there's a very good chance that she'll be back as good as she ever was. Well, it certainly sounds pretty hopeful that we could see her at the next Olympics. And without D'Agostino in the final, Shelby Houlihan will be the lone representative of Team USA in the women's 5,000 meter final on Friday. Naoko Funayama, WMUR News 9. Naoko, thank you. And the most decorated Olympian ever, Michael Phelps, is now back home. Phelps shared this photo on his Instagram this afternoon. It shows him, his son Boomer, and his fiance enjoying a swim, saying there's nothing like being back home. Great way to start my first day in retirement. So hopefully you all caught a little bit of his swimming because oh that's it. Goodness. He's done. He's done. Yep. He was great, though, was no great. doubt about that. Um, some serious threats now under investigation. Coming up, the threats made against Muslims at an apartment complex in Maine. Now police are asking for the public's help. Plus, a wake-up call that had some concern coming up why officials say six F-16 fighter jets were flying low this morning. And now here's Mike Haddad with a check of your wake-up weather. A gusty winds out there in many spots today, but the winds are weakening. Temperatures are falling. It's pleasantly mild in many spots now. And that'll greet you early tomorrow morning. Lower 60s, a bit of valley fog north and central. Mid to upper 60s, central and south. Here comes the warm air once again. How much higher do the temperatures go over the next few days? And what about the weekend ahead? All of that coming up. Maine police are investigating serious threats made against Muslims tonight. That's right. This is the apartment complex where police say four notes were typed with a message threatening Muslims and referring to them as terrorists. Westbrook police say the threats were reported this morning by an Iraqi resident living at the complex. Um, she said that she doesn't really feel bad or feel good because she didn't get anything, so she feels that she, like she's safe. And police are asking anyone with information to come forward. The notes have been collected as evidence and are being investigated. Four fishermen safe tonight after the Coast Guard rescued them off the coast of Maine. Around midnight, the Coast Guard received transmission from a crew member aboard the 71-foot vessel saying that they were taking on water. Using a distress signal, a Coast Guard helicopter crew located the fishermen in a life draft. The fishermen were taken to the hospital with mild hypothermia. Tonight, some answers for residents in the southern part of the state who were woken up by some loud rumbling. Well, six F-16 fighter jets were diverted to Pease unexpectedly around 3 this morning. The U.S. military jets left South Carolina, headed to their home base in Italy, when their refueling tanker encountered mechanical issues. Since they can't fly overseas without refueling, they were forced to land. Well, the rumble of the low-flying F-16s had people along the seacoast concerned. And it sounded to me like they had gone up and down the coastline a couple times. So I was suspicious and a little worried. And I panicked, thought something's going on, ran into the kids' room and put my arms up as if to brace them in case something awful was happening. And eventually the sound stopped. The jets are at Pease where they will remain until Friday. All right, trending time tonight at 10. AT&T is now raising the prices on some of its data plans, but they say the higher prices come with more data. 
Customers who want to keep their existing plans don't need to do anything. The new rates take effect this Sunday, and AT&T says they are eliminating charges for exceeding monthly data caps, at least for those who do switch to those new rates. And Happy Meal prizes are getting healthier. Right now, McDonald's is giving out fitness trackers with those kids' meals. It's part of a campaign to get kids more active. The uh, bands come in six colors and will be handed out over the next four weeks. McDonald's says the fitness trackers will be available for that four-week period. Hmm. I'm ashamed to admit that my son has three of those already. Hey! <laughs> You know. No better way to be fit, I guess. If you're going to do it, you might as well stack them all up and, uh, yeah. and away you go. There you go. It makes you mm -hmm. feel a little bit better about eating fast food with your kid, I guess, sure, right? Sure, you wear one for each day of the week. Yeah. If you build up to seven, you'll be good. There you go. There you go. That's one way to look at yeah. it. Yeah, hey, how about the weather? Quite windy today. Very. You know, temperatures a little bit lower than they have been, but take a look at uh, time-lapse photos out there in Newfound Lake where it almost looked the part of fall on the water with those gusty winds kicking up the wave action there, but temperatures pleasantly mild air nice and dry compared to the humidity we had that was way up there earlier in the morning. Beautiful sunset, by the way, out there at Newfound Lake and many other spots across New Hampshire. 81 degrees, the official high in, in Concord. Hey, take a look at that right at the average. Doesn't happen too often. 98, the record set back in 1913. The low 66, and that's the current air temperature as dry air continues to build on in along with that northwest wind that is shutting down. So we are seeing very pleasant temperatures across the state right now. Upper 50s north on average, mid 60s central and a few lower 70s showing up in Manchester and over towards Portsmouth. But outside of that, it is on the mild side. The dew point's not all that bad right now, running in the upper 50s to very low 60s. Just a little bit sticky, but not nearly as humid as it was earlier this morning. And the wind field, well, that has shut down considerably. We had those gusts over 40 miles per hour in spots today, driving in that much drier air. And as you can see, overnight tonight, we will cool nicely into the 50s and the very low 60s. Now, what starts to move back in tomorrow? Yeah, more of that summer heat. Now, we're not talking well over 90, but upper 80s to around 90 off to our south and west today. That moves in for the next few days, maybe slightly cooler for the second half of the weekend, but a lot of summer warmth still on the map, and we are going to be talking about that over the next few. In terms of showers and storms, really not much out there. There are a few trying to hold together through southeastern parts of Ontario, moving into the Great Lakes, down through the Mid-Atlantic region, where heavy-duty storms are right now postponing or at least delaying not postponing, but at least delaying the Red Sox game right now in the sixth or seventh inning. We'll get an official word from Jamie in a little bit on what inning we are in. I think the Sox are doing pretty well there. Hey, tomorrow we all do well if you have outdoor plans, except for an isolated shower. You'll see during the course of the afternoon, clouds begin to fill back in. A slight chance, mostly northern.